Our hair is all back to normal now, and we're ready to head into outer space. And my mistake at the top of the show, I told you it was Pleiadians. It's Pleiadians. Yes, exactly right. That, I uh, need that. That <laughs> Billy's been talking to. Brad Staggs has been talking about UFOs, and he's here today to talk about Billy Meyer. Yes, and today it does get a little strange, I will have to admit. Pleiades is the star cluster in the nighttime sky, which can be seen throughout the northern continent. This man, Billy Meyer, uh, his full name is Edward Billy Meyer. They call him Billy because of his affinity for the Old West in America. He has claimed to have contact with beings from the star cluster known as Pleiades. Now, whether or not you believe that is a, is a different story. But the pictures that he has taken, the things that he has said, and this is a man with only a sixth grade education, and he has come back and, and brought technical terms from these contact meetings that he's had in the forest in Switzerland. People have driven him to these contact points, and he's come back with very technical information that no one understands how, how a man with, with a sixth grade education would know these things. This is probably the most documented case in UFO history, and we will meet the people who have done that. Colonel Wendell Stevens, Tom Welch, and Lee and Britt Elders have conducted this investigation into the Billy Meyer case. Now, what you're about to see is a little bit hard to believe, but prepare yourself for this. These are the photos of Edward Billy Meyer, a Swiss farmer who has claimed to have contact with extraterrestrials from the star cluster we know as the Pleiades. A fantastic claim by any standards, and the photos are sure to raise questions in even the most open-minded individuals. If real, they're some of the most convincing evidence in existence of life from other planets. If a hoax, the questions come to mind. How and why? You have to know Billy, or at least observe him through some of our video that we have of him. He's uh, a handicapped Swiss farmer. He's lacking in education, sixth grade education equivalent. He lives on a pension of roughly equivalent 500 US dollars per month because of his loss of his left arm. And so he doesn't have resources really to get involved and create some exotic hoax. We couldn't find the compasses. Voice in my head, I heard something to leave the house, to go out, and to take a photo camera with me. Lee and Britt Elders are professional investigators specializing in corporate espionage and computer data theft with their company, Intercept. And so the last thing on our mind was a UFO case. We wanted no part of it. But our friend, good friend, Colonel Wendell C. Stevens, retired Air Force, spent 30 years searching, uh, looking into the UFO phenomena. He was uh, very persuasive. And he finally talked us into meeting him in London, which we did, and traveling to Switzerland to meet this uh, character, Edward Billy Meyer. You say they're advanced technologically. How, how far ahead of us advanced are they? They are about 3,500 years in their experiences about technology. They study us because we represent an earlier stage of their own evolution. The elders eventually spent nearly 10 years of their lives on this case, a case that stretches the boundaries of imagination and the very fabric of what we know as reality. On my camera, yeah. we're taking yeah. movies, right? Yeah. This is actual 8mm movie footage shot by Meyer of the Pleiadian craft. He claimed not only that he had photographed their ships, but that he had even met with the Pleiadians several hundred times at their request. He's always referred to it as getting a cooling sensation across his forehead, like a slight breeze of, uh, of air. And that was uh, telling him that they were in the vicinity to go out and get on his moped and ride, and to get away from civilization as best he could so that they could have a one-on-one -on -one contact with him. I think the underlying structure of the conversations is that it's time that the earth human realized they aren't the thinking the only thinking beings in the universe uh, they talked about some scientific information but nothing in detail just little tiny pieces to a great big puzzle Meyer kept a journal of his contacts writing most of what was said you call us extraterrestrials or star men and you attribute to us superhuman powers 
even though you do not know us. Regarding this, we are men like you, but our knowledge and our understanding exceeds yours considerably, especially in the technical field. The messages to Meyer made perfect sense and were apparently meant to be shared with the rest of the world. We have to take care of ourselves as a planet because we don't only affect our future, but we affect everything in the universe. <coughs> then you sat here, here and talked to her? Yeah, then we were talking here for uh, about one hour or one hour and a quarter, something like that. The Pleiadians had a game plan for Meyer in one case to aid the ailing planet Earth. They asked Meyer to write a letter to a doctor, Professor McElroy, the University of Harvard, I think it was, and warn him and give him information they were going to give Meyer, and that information was on the ozone level. They said that we were in deep trouble, that very few scientists had this information now, but in time they would see the critical situation that exists. Now this is, we're talking 1975, we're talking 15 years ago that he sent this letter. Did not hear anything in return. Last year, we read in the Arizona Republic here where Professor McElroy was leading the expedition of scientists to the North Pole to study the ozone problem. Coincidence? Very possibly. When investigating a case of this nature, all aspects and theories must be considered with equal weight. There is other physical evidence that Meyer claims to have received from the visitors, things that may astound you, or at least make you wonder. And tomorrow we will see about the investigation uh, uh, that uh, Lee and Britt and Tom and Colonel Stevens all uh, took part in and tried to disprove, any, uh, disprove Billy Meyer at first, and they couldn't. What do you think? I guess that's the big question. If you think you've seen something, do you believe all this? Is this just nonsense? Send us a letter. At the end of the show, we'll give you the address. You could be seeing more of this type of thing. We'd love to investigate it. So if you uh, have some stories you'd like us to investigate, let us know, please. You see, it's my right. question is, why didn't anybody follow him, Brad? No, they did. They did. They, did the other people see things? They, yeah, people would take him to the contact points, and he would go off into the forest. And the interesting thing was, on rainy nights, he would go into the forest and come back dry and you warm. You are kidding. No. And these are people who had no reason to want to, to go along with this. Uh, if it was a hoax, they had no reason to want to go along with the hoax. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Sure. All right. Thanks for being here. And coming up next, we're going to showcase Cher Klosner. Don't miss it. Green River, Wyoming, the town of the day. Castle Rock was made famous worldwide in paintings from the artist Moran. It's the most famous of the rock formations that surround Green River.